This happened about seven years ago, but I still remember it like it happened yesterday. I was maybe 16 at the time and super into the paranormal. I grew up in the church and was told time and time again that the paranormal did not exist outside of the realm of just demons and angels. So, as any curious teenager who had to find out for themselves, my friend and I snuck out to buy a Ouija board. The two of us then drove out and parked on a deserted dirt road so there would be no chance of either of our religious parents finding out what we were doing. Because, as you would assume, a Ouija board was a big no-no. The two of us climbed in the back seat of our car and set out the board. I think about an hour went by of absolutely nothing happening, besides one of us getting jittery and moving the planchet slightly. Then it started moving. It was slow, but it gave a year and spelled rape. That was it. We tried to ask questions, but no response. We said goodbye and drove to a grocery store and threw the board away. I looked up the year and sexual assault cases in our area and unfortunately found one. The case happened in the late 1970s, so I couldn't find much information, but I was definitely unsettled and overwhelmingly confused on why this was communicated with us. Went home that night, felt super anxious and had a hard time falling asleep, but nothing happened. Nothing happened for three weeks following that night. Before I get into what occurred, I need to describe my bedroom at the time. When you come in the door to my room, there's a closet on the left and then my bed is a few feet away, tucked into the corner of the wall. Straight ahead is a big window, and to the right is a desk and dresser. On the left wall, starting at the door and going around to my bed, there was a line of posters and records, with a bulletin board right above the head of my bed. The right side wall is covered with even more. So anyway, I come home from school and go about my business. That night I went to bed, still feeling uneasy, but fell asleep rather quickly. When I wake up in the morning and roll over, I feel multiple sharp stabs on my side. I sat up and saw that the bulletin board had fallen down right next to my head, and the tacks were all over my bed and stabbing into me. I looked around my room and felt chills. The posters and records from the doorway to my bed on the left wall had all fallen off. The ones on the other wall are all still up, not even crooked. I checked around the rest of the house, especially rooms sharing that wall, and nothing else had been displaced in the slightest. So, to me it seems that something had come into my room, knocked everything off the wall moving towards my bed, and stopped when it was right over my head while I slept. Some background on the first incident. My dad and I went on a trip across the country to move to a new state. One of the stops on the way would be my dad's uncle. We'll call him Mark. Cabin. The cabin is situated in rural Illinois, about 55 minutes from the nearest town. There are no street markings whatsoever, and the nearest neighbour is a good six miles away. Mark is a farmer by trade, so his cabin is surrounded by at least 200 acres of farmland, right in the middle of the Shawnee National Forest. On two sides of the cabin, there's a woodland, so you couldn't walk throughout, and on the other two sides, there are fields of crops. Now, the cabin itself is three stories. The basement just houses a small garage and laundry room. The middle floor is the largest, having Mark's bedroom, the kitchen, the living and dining room and a bathroom. The top floor is just a landing and two bedrooms that connect through a shared bathroom. My dad and I each got one of the bedrooms. The middle floor has a raised deck on three sides that are full of windows and has a massive sliding glass door. And you guessed it, when it's nighttime out there, there is absolutely nothing to subset the darkness. You can't see a single thing out of the windows, no matter how hard you try. Now, Let's move on to the creepy part. The first night we stayed there, I was sitting on my dad's bed, chatting. He had his window open to ventilate the room, and you could hear lots of movement up from outside on the ground level. Of course, we couldn't see anything. We could only hear trees swaying, branches and dry grass crunching by something walking on it. Don't worry, we assumed it was deer as there were many in the area, and went to bed without any issues. The next day comes and goes after my dad, 
and I spent it exploring the area on a UAV. The next night after Mark goes to bed, my dad and I were sitting in the living room watching an old movie on the TV. This was around 9pm and I remember getting this distinctly anxious feeling while sitting there with my dad. I routinely looked through some of the windows that were surrounding it but as you guessed, I could see nothing but black. Around 10.30, my dad and I got to our appointed bedrooms and he quickly falls asleep. I messed around on my phone till around 1.30. At this point, I shut my door to the point where only a sliver of light is getting into my room and I could barely see out into the dim landing. I plug my phone into the charger and hop into bed, ready to go to sleep. Around 20 or 30 minutes goes by of me trying to fall asleep and that's when I hear it, clear as day. There's a loud and forceful knock on one of the windows. Three distinct knocks. I shoot up in bed and just sit there for a few seconds, listening and looking out through the small crack in the door. I get up and I'm hit with this overwhelming feeling that I should not open my door and go out. So I end up going through the shared bathroom and into my dad's room. I wake the poor guy up from a dead sleep and tell him that I heard someone's knock on either the glass doors or the windows. My dad gets up and I follow him downstairs and he checks the entire house before locking both of the doors that my uncle always leaves open. After turning on the porch light and checking the house, we found nothing and went back up to our rooms. I'm extremely unsettled but could tell my dad was assuming I had just freaked myself out. The next morning comes around, I go downstairs while my dad is sitting at the table with Mark. Apparently the two had been discussing what I had heard last night. That's when my dad tells me that Mark has heard the same knocking, at the same time of night on three separate occasions. The first time he heard the knocking, he immediately jumped up from bed and grabbed the shotgun he keeps in his closet. He knew there'd be no one or no thing good knocking at the door in the middle of nowhere at 2am. He saw nothing when he looked outside and when the knocking came twice more, he didn't bother checking it. Now Mark is a 73 year old tough cowboy that's straight up fearless and doesn't find any enjoyment in lying. We left the same day to continue our journey across the states. The second event occurred just last week. My dad was visiting my mom and I in our two bedroom house. He flew out at the city's airport the next day. Due to him being there, I spent the night on an air mattress on the floor of my mom's bedroom while he slept in my bed. My mom's bedroom is in the back of the house with a small backyard and then a sloped six foot wall leading up into the desert being all there was. Around 5am I jolted awake with this extremely loud knock on my mum's bedroom window. I sat up and just stared at the curtain covered window. My mum had already been awake, early riser, and had her earphones in while watching something. She yanked them out and asked me if I had heard it as well. The two of us just sit in silence. She tells me that if she opens the curtains, she just knows that something is going to be staring back at her. I go and wake up my dad, poor dad, and tell him the two of us heard someone at my mom's window. He goes outside and finds nothing, but reports that he heard the dogs barking off and on for a little over an hour. Strange. My mom and I heard no barking whatsoever. The sun comes and goes, and nothing else happens the next night, or any night since then. So I'd like to start by saying I had a paranormal investigation team come to my apartment. They cleansed it. And it all seemed to calm down for the most part after their third visit. But just before Christmas activity exploded, doors slamming open in my apartment, voices, running footsteps, the faucets turning off and on by itself, even my dog getting pets sometimes and what looks like slapped others. I also have a clear as day voice memo of my friend and I sitting on the couch. On Saturday, while I was using the bathroom, it sounded like someone broke into my apartment. I still have Christmas decorations up and the jingle bells on my front door went ballistic, like someone swung the door open and shut it. Granted, I never heard the door shut and it was locked. It was about 1.30am and I live alone. 
My dog and kitten were hissing and snarling like someone they hate just walked in. I must stress that my kitten and dog are very loving towards each other and don't ever fight each other. I'm 5'1 and about 110 pounds. I'm not big, but I tried to make myself as seem as mean as possible. And I ran out of the bathroom with one of my little pocket tasers out. What I saw when I exited the bathroom was shocking to say the least. The heavy tray full of random things on my coffee table was now on the floor. Mind you, the only side I had heard before this was booming footsteps. Not something that I have trouble picking up sometimes laying on the ground. All of the cabinets on my side table and coffee table were open. And I think the scariest part was my bar stools were still when I passed them. But as I checked the still locked doors, I heard my cat hissing from behind me. Both of my bar stools were spinning. One clockwise and the other counterclockwise. Then it was like someone had grunted in my ear. Mentally, I tried to reason that my boyfriend had come over and was messing with me until I realized he was at his place more than likely asleep and he doesn't have a key. I was still holding my little taser and I hit the trigger and jammed it backwards, hoping to hit whoever was behind me. No sound, no nothing. No one was behind me. I then called my boyfriend, obviously shaken up and not really wanting to talk about it when he asked. But today things picked up a lot more. See, I work night shift, therefore I sleep during the day. I was showering this morning. I live alone with my kitten and my dog. The kitten was in the shower with me because he's weird and my dog was curled up on the mat next to the toilet. I turned around to reach for my soap and it was like someone was standing in the bathroom, pushing their arm through the shower curtain to touch me. I slapped it, not really knowing what to do. I think I made it mad. The curtain flung open and all the hooks came off the shower rod and the whole thing hit the ground. My dog, who was normally tame and a big scaredy cat, started growling and ran out of the room. I decided my hair didn't need to be washed and ran out of the room, completely forgetting about my towel. At this point, I was standing in the living room sopping wet, my dog crying with the kitten on the couch while I slowly spun around. It was like my apartment was alive. Everything seemed to be moving. The bar stools, the Polaroid camera on my coffee table, even the leashes hanging from hooks by the door suede. As fast as it happened, it all stopped. It was quiet for a moment until my pet's food containers flipped over in the kitchen and the water faucets in the bathroom and kitchen turned on full blast. I'd like to note that my kitten has learned how to turn them on so he can sit under the water, which I began to blame on him until I felt him walk up and start licking the water off of my legs. I felt like crying at this point, like this horrible gut-wrenching feeling filled me, like something that felt worse than anything I've ever felt before. That's when I decided I had to go. I started pulling on random clothes that I left hanging over my bar stool, and I was putting on my pants. I noticed my extremely thick hair wasn't hanging over my head like it should when I'm pulling my still wet body through leggings. A couple strands were lifted like someone was holding them away from my face. I screamed and ran outside holding my kitten and my very large dog in my arms. I could hear what sounded like growling as I closed the door. I sat in my car for about an hour and a half before I went back inside and put my dog in his kennel. When I shut both latches. At this time I actually left. I was gone for about an hour due to an errand I had to run and when I opened my front door, my dog jumped on me. Mind you, I locked him in his cage. His collar was off, unclipped, and he seemed happy enough. The cat bed and blanket that stayed on top of it was also on the floor, and the kennel door was still locked. I was in shock to say the least. My dog's a big boy, very muscular, and this escape trick has only happened twice before. Once when I first got him, and today being the second. The entire apartment was cold, and truthfully, I feel like I've tried everything to try and protect myself and my pets. I'm strong in my faith. I pray every day. I've saged my apartment, as has the paranormal team that came three times, but nothing seems to be helping. But even with all of this, plus the previous stuff I have yet to post about on this, I have to say my bedroom is the absolute scariest place to be in my very small apartment. 
If anyone could offer advice or anything, please help me. I grew up for about nine years in Florida, for the first part of my life living in St. Augustine and Jacksonville area. For those of you who don't know, St. Augustine is one of the oldest and most haunted cities in the USA. In particular, there are two different forts located on the main island, and on a smaller island across from each other. I cannot fully recall the history of the two forts, but they would fight on the daily, with the mainland firing cannons at the island fort and so forth. I was maybe about six to nine years of age when this happened. My parents had taken my brother and I on a day trip to tour the fort on the mainland. This fort was also a popular spot for ghost tours, telling stories about the prisoners kept underneath the fort, and how they would be brought to the outside walls to be executed and burned in a stone oven as well. I'm assuming this all happened during the early settlements of America, with colonists and whatnot. My brain can't recall the history, so don't hate on me. Common ghost appearances would be uniformed soldiers marching around at their stations and the like. The fort never employed real life actors to dress up or anything, so if you saw a uniformed period styled person, it was likely a ghost. The day we went to the fort to tour, it was like any other, with plenty of visitors meandering inside and outside the walls. Since it was a relatively small, my parents let my brother and I roam inside on our own. I had gone to the centre of the fort and noticed four to five men in period uniforms on the right staircase, hauling a whole cannon up the stairs like it was nothing. Nobody around me seemed to take notice of these men doing this, and I stared in utter disbelief that they suddenly appeared and began to drag a cannon upstairs to the ramparts. Not a minute later, I heard a loud cannon boom and jumped. I went running to my mother to ask her if she, she heard the cannon as well to which she replied that she heard nothing. Nobody saw anything or heard any noise except me. In the middle of the day, no less. I moved to Texas, but I had to fly to Utah to pick up my car. It's February 2020, and I leave Utah at approximately 6pm, with a friend who flew with me. We decided we'd spend the night in Albuquerque, New Mexico, so we could get some sleep and we'd arrive there around 4am. So we're driving, things are fine. You have to pass through a reservation to get to the main highway for Albuquerque, and something felt off from the second we entered New Mexico. It's maybe 2 or 3am at this point, and my friend was fast asleep with her head against the window, while I played the music loudly. We had to drive slowly, as the speed limit was only 35 or 45 miles an hour. As we got further into the reservation, I heard a sharp knock on the roof of my car. It was hard enough to be clearly heard over the music. My friend was startled awake and asked what happened. I shrugged because I didn't want to stop. This might have been intuition, but I'd rather have rock damage or drive on a flat tyre or anything else than stop on that road. It was dark and something just felt wrong. I had really absurdly bright LED headlights on my car and as such, I could see a few miles ahead of where my car was going. My friend was watching the road, and I slowed down to get a better look while I was still a good distance away. What I saw freaks me out to this day. The best way I could describe it was a body of a human, half contorted downward. The hair and head was upside down, and its arms were like large, stalactite looking things. The thing was so dark that my headlights couldn't penetrate it, However, it illuminated everything around it. Its face wasn't looking at us originally, but it twisted its head around to look at us. It didn't have facial features, but it looked distorted like it had a broken jaw or something and it was almost blurry. I pride myself on my photographic memory, but it was like it didn't want me to see it. At this point, we're no more than 50 to 75 feet away and I step on it. My friend asked if I saw that and I nodded my head. I didn't even want to talk if I was being honest. I didn't want to breathe. I was shaking so badly. It felt ominous, evil. I can't explain in full detail the fear I felt. It was like it penetrated my bones. It was a primal instinct to run and run as fast as I could away from it. 
I told her not to look back. We don't want it to follow us. I swear I drove a solid 120 plus miles an hour until I got off the reservation. We didn't end up stopping in Albuquerque. I've drove all the way to Lubbock instead and we spent the night there. I think I'm going slightly mad, but who knows? I bought my first house two years ago. It was built in the 40s or 50s, a terraced house with a converted attic. At first, I lived here alone and everything was okay. I felt watched sometimes, but I figured it was just me living alone for the first time. I then started looking after my family dog during my first lockdown. I didn't feel watched as much, but whatever it was felt further away. I mentioned it to my mum and sister, but they just thought I was being odd. As I wasn't scared, whatever it didn't want to hurt me, they just observed, so it was dismissed. My partner moved in and I started feeling watched at night, as I'm a night owl, but I just closed the door or I would feel whatever it was peeking in through the crack of the door. We got a puppy who just seems sort of oblivious but is always around me, especially when I go upstairs. I've always been sensitive when it comes to these things and I've only seen something very scary once, but that was a very long time ago at a different house. My mother moved in with my partner and I and stayed in the converted attic. She used to be a sound sleeper. Since she moved in though, she can't get a good night's sleep. I'm pregnant and things have been getting creepier. Firstly, I keep seeing something standing out of the corner of my eye, no matter what I'm doing. I'll look to where it should be, but I see nothing. When I go back to it, it's gone for a little while and then comes back and I have to check again. Today, it was while I was working and it was standing by my window, but each time I looked, it was gone. Second, when I was awake at night, I love pregnancy insomnia, there's something peeking from the bathroom. The dog sleeps on the bed and he ignores it, but then I started getting an image in my head out of nowhere of something crawling from the bathroom down the hall. This has only been since I've been pregnant, and only when it's dark. I have to check the door is still, or I swear it opens more. Probably an overactive brain in the wind. Third, so my mom hasn't been sleeping well. Waking up a lot, she thought it was stress from work. Last night she feels something tapping her on both sides of the chest. She was awake. The next thing she feels when she turns over is something tapping her on her arm, keeping her awake. She feels that it may have been waking her up for a while, but this is the first time she's been awake for it. Pretty sure there's been more than what I've put, but nothing springs to mind. So what do you guys think is going on with my house? Moving out isn't an option at this time, even though I do plan to move in the next few years. When I was six or seven, we moved out to a ranch in the countryside of Laredo, Texas. Not a lot of people with good income lived out there. Most houses were isolated and surrounded by woods. My mom and stepdad decided to rent this house because rent was cheap. Only three fifty a month. No indoor plumbing or central air. A lot of low income families lived out here. There was a family that lived next to us. A family of six kids, all girls and two adults. They were also low income and often didn't have much to eat. My mum would often help them out with food and in return the kids would come over and help my mum clean the house. This one day they came over and ate dinner with us, helped my mum clean and me and the youngest girl that was about my age fell asleep on my bed. After a while my mum woke us up because it was getting late and she needed to go home. Her sisters had left her behind because they didn't want to wake her. It was a good walk home, as there was a dirt road leading to our house to get to hers. My mum was going to send my brother to walk her, but I butted in and said, please can I walk her? As we were friends, my mum said yes. So I then walked her to the gate. After we departed, I started on my way home. When out of nowhere, she comes running behind me crying, throws herself at me and pulls me down by the shoulders. I ask her what's wrong, what happened? She points up and says, look up there, look. She was pointing up at the top of some abandoned train cars. 
And what I saw till this day, I cannot explain. There were three skeletons walking back and forth. It was like, what the? One was laying on its side and it had clothes on too, like a tank top and shorts. The other two were standing up, just walking back and forth be behind that one, stopping and waving hi. We looked at each other and ran to my house. I quickly told my mom what we saw. My mom and two brothers plus us went back to look and they were still there, waving high at us. We threw rocks at them, but the rocks didn't phase them, just like went through them. Either that or we were bad at aiming. After a while, we went home and never saw them again. Till this day, I can't seem to understand or be able to explain how those skeletons were moving. Someone probably say we were hallucinating, but how can five people see the same thing? Some have said it was Halloween props, but no, it was the 90s and I never saw any Halloween props that moved that well during that time. The technology wasn't real yet for that kind of movement. Halloween props like that cost a lot of money and that family couldn't even afford to eat. We were in a dirt poor country. This scenario happened when I was younger, maybe eight or seven. My older brother and I shared a bedroom since we lived in a pretty small apartment at the time and it was next to a really busy road so there was always a lot of noise. It was time for us to go to sleep since it was a school night. So I go say goodnight to my older sister and parents and head to bed. My older brother's bed was by the window and mine was up against a wall. Since we lived next to a super busy road, the street lamp would shine through our window because our curtains were really thin. A little while goes by and I struggled to fall asleep because I could hear drunk people screaming and shouting at cars that drove past. Then all of a sudden, everything goes quiet. No cars, no people, nothing. I find this odd, but don't think much of it when my cat runs up to the window. Before I could question why she did, I heard the weirdest, loudest, unexplainable screech. I went to grab my cat away from the window because I didn't want whatever made that noise to see her. The noise obviously woke my brother up. We both looked out the window to see what it was. There was this weird pterodactyl looking creature sitting on top of the street lamp with its wings wide open. I look at my brother and he looks like he's about to cry. I grab him and my cats and we run to my bed and hide under the blankets since it's furthest away from the window. When we woke up the next morning, I told my older sister about what happened and she said that she heard the noise too. She looked out her window briefly and saw it fly out of view. I drew what it looked like just to make sure what she saw wasn't just a bird and she said that it looked exactly like that. We told our parents about it and they really didn't comment, comment much on it since my siblings and I have a history of telling our parents weird abnormal things. Like seeing a tall man walk up and down the stairs at night and another man standing at the edge of our beds looking at us. Let's just say, I hope I never hear or see that thing again. The only reason I believe ghosts exist is because I experienced an EVP on accident once when I was 15 years old. I was recording a 1v1 basketball game with my brother and I in our driveway. Watched the video a couple times and realised a little halfway through the video a voice said, What you doing Ian? And then laughs in an inhuman way. A sort of cross between a ghoul and cartoon character, hard to explain. I remember showing my sister and brother-in-law they said, Oh dude you're done for, and laughed. My mother, who doesn't really believe in ghosts, was trying to, her hardest not to hear it and when she finally heard it, she said I did it to trick her. My friends straight up didn't know how to react. They don't believe in ghosts. Nobody else was home that day but my mom, me and my brother. My brother and I were playing basketball and my mom isn't really one to play tricks or mimic spirits. She's straightforward and religious. There's something very, very unsettling about a spirit saying your actual name. It knows me. It didn't say something generic or random like hello or stay away. It literally said my name. That has to mean it's been around for a while. It makes my skin crawl to think something has been watching me without me knowing for knows how long. Growing up, I never experienced anything paranormal. 
Why and how would something say my name on a random video like that? Broad daylight, unprovoked. Where did it come from? When I was 10 years old, my brother and I were the last ones off the bus from school every day. We were nearing my house which is in the Midwest countryside. Lots of cows and trees and fields etc. Anyways, about a mile away from the house, I looked out the window and saw an orange blimp in the sky. Standard American football shaped blimp. Surprisingly, I didn't think anything of it. Because a day or so beforehand, me and a bunch of kids at recess saw a blue blimp in the sky. I watched it and thought it was cool to see a blimp this far outside of town, especially near my house. After a few seconds, the blimp shifted from a football shape to a star, literally shrunk before my eyes into a tiny shiny dot that resembled a star in the night sky. Except it wasn't a star, it was just a blimp a second ago. Not even two seconds after it shifted, it launched even further into the sky, shot down to its original height and then shot completely off into space. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever experienced. I was a quiet kid, but being the last kid on the bus besides my brother, I shouted about it. And when I got off the bus, I ran to my mother to tell her, like a crazy old man yelling end times. My mother said I was crazy, naturally, and I never told my dad because mom shut me down pretty hard and it killed my mood. Fast forward years later, shortly after I turned 22, my dad and I took a short road trip to go pick up a car he bought halfway across the state. We talked about a lot and somehow got on the topic of UFOs. He told me when he was 12 or 13, he and his brothers were playing down by a creek near their house. Which by the way, his old house was only a few miles down away from our house. And they saw an orange football shaped object in the sky. I was absolutely blown away when he said that. My father's skeptical and doesn't believe in this kind of stuff ever. But when I shared my story, he paused and admitted it was very, very odd to have seen the same exact thing more than 30 years apart. I spent August 2019 to August 2020 living in a Catholic volunteer house. While I was religious, I didn't really believe in much of the paranormal outside of cryptids and extraterrestrials. The church was more of a social thing for me and I was deeply drawn to the ritual of it all. I point this out to make it clear that I wasn't looking for an experience in that house. It didn't take long living there to start noticing odd things. It started off as the sound of footsteps. That was easy to write off. It was an old house and perhaps the house was just shifting as some people say. These footsteps became so constant that it clearly couldn't be the sounds of an old house. The footsteps were loud, the day and night, when the house was full and when there was just one person inside. I stopped denying this when the steps were obviously coming from the stairs. The clear sound of top floor windows closing and opening started and nothing sounds like that other than just that. The basement door to the outside would open by itself after we knew for sure it was closed and locked, not even a minute before it suddenly opened. It was like these sounds were well thought out. They would lead me to the attic, only for me to immediately hear rushing steps down the stairs on the floor below me. So often, I would be led to the basement, and my attention couldn't shift from the doors to the call room. Looking at those doors filled me with an odd dread that would go away the moment I walked away. My housemates were scared, and being the only male in a Catholic program put a bit of pressure on me to do something. Just a cultural expectation. I tried getting a priest out to do a blessing, but he couldn't because of COVID. A strange bummer to me given the theology. I ended up trying my best to bless the house myself with one of my housemates. That did nothing to stop any of it. Yesterday, when I was going to sleep, I walked up the stairs to my bedroom at about 1am. I live with my parents, so my mum was sleeping in her room, my dad fell asleep on the couch, my dog was sleeping in the bedroom. When I closed the door, I heard heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. I have a very creaky staircase, so you can hear when someone is walking up. I checked and there was no one there. 
My mum's still sleeping in her room and my dad's still asleep on the couch. So I just moved in from an apartment building to a quite old house a few months ago, which was at first quite strange to me since the apartment I lived in was small and the family wanted to quickly swap, even though they had a bigger house and they th have, I think, three children that will have to share one bedroom. But they still really wanted to swap with us. So we did the swap and there was not much going on at the start. Things began to get a bit weird after about three months. At first, I started only hearing some weird sounds, like footsteps coming from upstairs. Didn't really pay much attention to that. After some time, occasionally doors in the house, mostly to my bedroom, started opening by themselves. One time on Halloween nights, the doors to my room busted open like someone kicked it. I then started waking up sometimes at about three at night by my dog that sleeps in my room every night barking and growling at nothing in the room. This happened a lot, not every night, but maybe a few times a month. I started hearing heavy things being dropped in my bedroom from time to time, but when I went to check, I could never find anything that might have fallen. Although sometimes I can see things falling on their own. One night, a cabinet opened up itself and a jar dropped from it. I remember a few days ago, I woke up in the morning to get ready for college and my dad's guitar started playing by itself. It wasn't any songs, just like something was hitting random strings. After that, the guitar just fell. The guitar was standing there for about a month without anyone ever touching it. A few nights ago, I remember I woke up at around 3 a.m. to see my dog growling at nothing in my room when suddenly the door opened by itself. My dog walked out of my room through that door and started barking at something at the bottom of the stairs. I told her to go back in, close the door, but she didn't stop growling. This might also sound a bit weird, but sometimes you can feel like something is staring at you when you walk up the stairs. I've also got an Alexa, and sometimes when no one says anything, she would randomly go, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Or she would start saying some random Wikipedia articles when no one was talking to her. I have an EMF. So I tried to leave it on my shelf and record through the night with a night vision camera, but I didn't manage to capture anything. One night, I did record something that looked like an orb, but I thought it was just a bug. As I said, I don't know if I'm overreacting or not, but just thought it might, I might ask someone for help. As an avid horror fan, Across all media and otherwise, I've always been interested in the paranormal. That being said, I've also always been a huge skeptic. I poke holes in other stories all the time. I always have. I've just never been on that side of the fence. I swear by science and logic and whatever, but earlier something fairly small happened that completely rocked me. I woke up at around 1.40am and went to the loo about 10-15 minutes later. At which point I was already properly awake because I'd let my dogs out into the garden and been on my phone for a little while. My bedroom is at the bottom of my stairs. My loo is at the top. Anyway, when I came back downstairs and into my room, I checked my door so my dogs didn't get out of my room when I went back to sleep and sat down. Not 20 seconds later, I hear a diamond coming from the stairs. This isn't uncommon in my house since five people live here so someone is always up to use the loo or get a drink or whatever. But when it got to the bottom of the stairs, my door opened and the hallway was empty and the lights were still off. I went out to look and everyone's bedroom doors were shut and no one was up and about. Someone mentioned my stairs creaking on their own because yes, there would. But I've lived in this house for nearly a decade. They creak on their own all the time nowadays. But anyone with old wooden stairs would probably know the difference between that and someone literally walking down them. My door, when shut, literally can't be opened on its own because of the type of latch it is or whatever it's called. I know no one here has any reason to believe me, but I was hoping someone would humour me and just give me their take on it. Being a sceptic has been a big part of me for a long, long time, so I guess I'm pretty rattled by this. Strange stuff happens around me all the time, but I'm almost always always able to come up with a logical explanation. I can't do this one. I'm a male in my 20s and do medical work from home. 
Therefore, my internet is a need for my job. After phone issues, I never reconnected my number, since what I need it for is on Wi-Fi anyways, and I rarely travel. So figured it doesn't pay financially when there's access to most needs. Anyways, all morning long, my programs were running slowly, and things weren't responding. While currently living with my grandmother, as I'm working, I hear when the family calls to check in on her. My uncle normally calls earlier than normal on this day and claims he called her multiple times before while no calls came through. Around 1.50pm, everything crashed completely. No phone or internet was available. I tried to restart the router multiple times, completely shutting off and checking wires. Previous DSL wires were spliced and have managed to be fixed, but after all, still no phone or internet. No service on my cell phone, so all means of communication were down. You got this rundown, so this is where things get odd. 2.50pm, a state trooper shows up at my door, claiming they received a 911 call from our landline number. Confused, I asked her what, about what time she received the call, and she replied 15 minutes before she showed up at the door. My grandmother doesn't have a life alert for when I'm not there, so I informed her of it. She did restate that the call did come from the landline number, also confirming the last few digits. She asked to come in and we talked some more. She made conversation with my grandmother and I went to grab the house phone. I saw the screen still displaying the check telephone line, stating it's still down. I went back to her, saying we couldn't possibly make the call while giving her the phone. She picked up and it was dead air, no sound. 11pm as I'm writing this and still no connection. I told her about the situation this morning and that when she received the call, it was within the time frame of not being able to receive a connection. Her face said it all. I still have no clue what happened and I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. We have the internet back, but still no phone. The internet came back about 15 minutes after the trooper headed out. I've dealt with paranormal events in my life and even more. Recently, I found a painting known as The Crying Boy in an antique shop near me and have photos of it. DC Bay is known as a cursed painting. Not sure if there's relevance of having the photos of it on my phone or not, or if this is just another paranormal experience to add to my list. After all, the trooper did mention my deceased grandfather's name, who I've also had several visual experiences with after missing him some nights. Would love to tell more stories about my life, have photos and more to go along with some of them. This story happened three years ago when I was 15 in my village. I don't tell this story much because people tend to think I'm making it up, but I've been thinking of it quite a lot this week and I want people to know. My village is located in a rural area that's protected by the government because it's been considered a natural paradise for the last 30 years. This means that exploration in the area is quite difficult nowadays since it's forbidden to cut trees which means that it's a huge forest. I was spending my summer there and my favourite thing was going hiking, although I'd never gone alone into the woods, just roads with people. My grandma had told me that cleaning services had opened and rehabilitated a path that has been covered in bushes and trees for the last 30 years because of a race that was being prepared, like runners and stuff. Usually, I'd go to the nearest town, one hour away by foot, by the only way I knew, the road. On my way back from seeing friends there, I took the new path my granny said was safe alone. Mistake. The first part of the path was the easiest. Just too many obstacles and slides, but it was nothing compared to the rest. The second part was a hill full of rocks that was the hardest thing to go up. Literally had to climb on four legs like a dog. When I got to the top, I looked around and found some animal bones. I didn't pay much attention to it since the area is known for its big population of wolves and bears that go out at night. I continued my way faster than before. This part was plain floor, where the woods really begin, so it was a relief until I got to a dead end. Some huge trees had fallen exactly on a row on the path, and it was impossible to pass them. This seems really off to me, because there were no other fallen trees. The weirdest part? Aside from those trees, there was a little barn. Yes, a barn, in the middle of the woods. I thought to myself that it was probably abandoned. It looked like it. So I decided to throw my bag into the little field that belonged to the barn, 
And then I crossed the fence. I crossed it running without realizing the most bizarre thing. That field had no trees in it. It was clear. No bushes, no big plants, nothing. It really shouldn't be like that if it was abandoned. I started feeling concerned about how the location of the fallen trees was so coincidental. How there casually was a barn inside a clear field when that path had been closed for 30 years. It just seemed really off. I went on and luckily, I was reaching the last hill my grandma had described, the one that connected with the village. Suddenly there was a moment of silence in the woods, which allowed me to hear some branches cracking behind me. I thought to myself if it was a bird or something, but they came closer. They really sounded like footsteps. After trying to convince myself it was probably an animal, I was so afraid I couldn't look back. I started walking faster. Guess what? So did the footsteps. I just started running after noticing that, and so did the footsteps again. I was running for my life at this point. Suddenly, I started hearing incredibly loud grunts. Everything was going really fast. Luckily, I got to my village in a minute or so after that. I got into the patio of the first house I found and closed the door. It was a relative's house, no need to call the police. I stayed there for 10 minutes until I got my breath back and then came back home. I get chills from just remembering the place, not having a signal in the middle of nowhere and the grunts. It makes me think there was something following me since the barn and the trees were just a distraction to slow me down. Never went into the woods alone after that. For some context on this situation, I live with four roommates, and several days ago at around 2.30 in the morning, it sounded like someone was moving pots and pans around in our kitchen very loudly. At the time, I thought nothing of this as we're all college students, so someone was surely making a meal late at night. I asked all of them in the following days, and no one was out of their rooms or was awake at that time. One other roommate heard this and had the same thought. After this, we searched the whole house and even checked in our attic to see if someone was there. No one was up there, and nothing has occurred since. Besides the gaping hole where one of my roommates fell through the ceiling, he's okay and it was hilarious. Until I had a very strange occurrence earlier in the day. I'm still pretty creeped out as this happened a little less than an hour ago. I was sitting at my desk just doing some work and had been there for a couple of hours, not doing much, just in the flow of work and in my own little world. I have a journal with a pen resting next to it that's been stationary for hours. I notice the pen start to move slightly and move back to its original position and think nothing of it. But once I take my eyes off the pen and back to the monitor, it rolls to the middle of my desk and stops in the middle of my mouse pad. This may be a tiny thing that I chalked up to me doing something that caused it to move. I was looking for a song on my TV and was completely motionless when this occurred. I proceeded to stare at this pen for a minute or two and I say out loud, roll it back please. I was hoping for something, but unfortunately nothing occurred. I put the pen back in its original spot and started messing with it, seeing what caused it to move and if something minor could have caused this. I can confidently say that it took some energy to get this pen rolling from the side of my journal. This was not a gust of wind that caused this and was not caused by a banging on the desk or any other type of motion in the room, as there was none. The other very concerning thing about this is that the pen continued to roll down the entirety of my mouse pad until it hit my keyboard unlike what it did when it first moved where it stopped in the middle of my desk. I've tried rolling this pen repeatedly for the past hour and a half and cannot recreate it without it stopping the pen itself. I know this is pretty minor compared to other people's experiences, but this was enough for me to sage my house and hope for the best. So this just happened today, so it's super fresh. A little long also. A little background, I've had paranormal experiences before that were super scary. It always occurs when I'm half asleep, or even dead asleep at 3am. I've heard whispers in another language, and the next day was the worst day of my life. Maybe I'll tell the bad experiences in another post. So I learned in the past few years that these things are real. First-hand experience. 
Coming to today, I moved to a new country, and ever since I moved to this home, I have weird dreams every day. I don't usually dream much, and I know it's in this home only, because last week I was on vacation in another place, and had zero dreams. But it never felt evil here. It just felt weird. So today, I had a major interview which I had been preparing for for a week. I would set an alarm, and I'm that type of person who needs a single alarm to wake up. My interview was at 11am, alarm was at 9am. I snoozed unfortunately, but once I did that, I was still remembering my preparation and answers for the interview, while resting my eyes when I was half asleep. This is when I feel a distinct someone poking my shoulder from behind to wake me up. Twice. It was like poke, two second gap, poke. My eyes immediately open, and I see I'm laying facing my husband, so the wall is behind me. I could still feel a little pressure on where it poked. I started praying because at first, I thought it's another bad entity like the last couple of times. My heart is exploding and I'm praying, but unlike last time, I felt the vibes were not negative. So I turned around and grabbed my phone to see the time. It was 10.30am and the ghost woke me up for the interview. I just thanked him and told him to please don't help or come in front of me because I'm scared of this stuff. For context, I've been friends with someone for a couple of years now, and he had a very rough childhood to say the least. One of the reasons was he spent a large portion of his childhood without his mother. That's important. As he got older, he tried to look for her and the reason for her disappearance from his life. I promised to help him look for his mom, and I did try, but my research was pretty much fruitless. Until two weeks ago. He lives in a different country, so we can't physically meet yet. We went from texting most every day to not texting for weeks at a time. So naturally I was concerned. I hit up another friend of mine who reads tarot cards and asked her to tap into his energy for me to check if he was doing okay. Things were normal until she told me she kept hearing a woman crying and saying, I'm sorry, and mommy did not abandon you in Korean. The guy is ethnically Korean. Immediately after, my friend tells me she was starting to lose control of her movements. And all of a sudden, I hear what sounded like a completely different woman crying and talking to me, completely in Korean on the other line. In other words, my friend was possessed. At that point, I was freaking out because I didn't expect a random entity to pull up during a tarot reading. I'm a scaredy cat by nature, so normally I would hang up right then and there. But this time, I felt compelled to stay and listen. And the spirit didn't feel like a bad one anyway, so I thought, what's the worst that could happen? I felt deep in my soul that I was speaking to my friend's mother and I couldn't shake that feeling off. So I said her name and asked if it was her that I was speaking to. She confirmed it was her. She understood what I was saying in English, but replied in Korean. Because I didn't speak Korean, she would let my friend come back to her normal self to translate what was being said to me. We spoke for a while, and I learned quite a lot about her. She seemed to be quite fond of me, and explicitly stated she didn't mind that I was from a different race and culture from her son. She was a very sweet lady who was a victim of life circumstances, and was looking out for her son, even in death. This is my craziest paranormal experience to date, but it's also one of the most wholesome experiences I've ever had. I don't think I'll ever forget about it, or her. This all started when I was 12. It was around late 2012. We met the girl, let's call her Sarah, and her boyfriend at the time through my cousin and a bunch of his friends. Sarah was a really kind-hearted person, almost too pure for the world. She was black, although lighter skinned in complexion, had short natural red hair and freckles. She was also very heavy in weight, I believe almost twice my size, and keep in mind I'm a plus-sized girl myself. And almost everyone she knew, including her boyfriend, who was also cheating on her and let it be known, made fun of her for her looks. I was going through the exact same thing and still am, so I understood. My family and I, as in my mom, stepdad and little sisters, tried everything we could to at least get a smile out of her. 
with varying degrees of success. But we all knew she was very depressed and her self-esteem was very low to the point of no fix. Sarah stayed in our apartment for a couple of months before moving in with my cousin's then girlfriend. Let's call her Susie. My building is in the front of Susie's was all the way on the other side in the back. So Sarah would come back and visit on a regular basis. All seemed normal until one day she showed up. I don't remember everything that was said, but I do remember one thing vividly. She sighed and told my mom she was leaving. I didn't think much of it at first. Then one day, I came home from school to the news that Sarah had committed suicide, and I'm 100% sure it was her boyfriend, mainly, who drove her to her breaking point. She was only 23, she was also pregnant at the time, and it happened a month after I turned 13. Susie moved out of the apartment complex very soon after that happened. And if you don't already know, when you commit suicide or die a violent and unexpected death, your soul tends to remain trapped here on Earth for various reasons. The experience I'm about to explain in a minute made me believe in this even more strongly. So in other words, she is stuck in the apartments in which she died and haunts it. Several months later, everyone pretty much has moved on. I made the dumb move of taking a shortcut through that particular building. When I walked past the apartment door, I started catching a smell that I very much associated with Sarah. I thought it was my mind playing tricks on me at first, but the smell was so strong that I started feeling dizzy. I felt like I was being watched and I started hearing heavy, lazy footsteps. The hairs on my neck and arms were standing at attention. Something urged me to turn around and that's when I realised it wasn't my imagination at all. I saw a huge shadowy figure at first. Remember I mentioned she was very large in size. Then saw the edge of a blue lilo and stitch blanket that once belonged to me emerging from the shadow. I remember giving the blanket to her months before she died and because she loved it so much she always covered herself in it. The closer the figure was coming to me the more I got scared, the sadder was the atmosphere and the heavier the air. I booked it the hell out of the building and was even amazed at how fast I got home. To this day, I get chills and feelings of being watched when I walk past that building. I never saw her physically again, but I still try to avoid that building when I can. As for her boyfriend, I rarely hear from him now. Maybe he settled down with another woman and he's now laying low. Maybe he moved. So, I've been witness to a lot of paranormal and unexplainable events in my life. It's not that I go looking for it or anything, I just always seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Honestly, I would think myself a loony tune if others hadn't shared some of these moments with me. One day my wife, a friend and I were sitting on the couch watching God knows what, and having a discussion about something, when my wife stopped mid-sentence and said, what the hell is that? Is that a spider? She pointed at something, but at first, me and my friend didn't know what she was trying to point at. Then we saw it. In the centre of the living room, there seemed to be something small and black hanging in the air. We all at first thought it was a spider or some bug. My wife is scared of spiders, so being the man of the house, I step up to remove the pest from the premises. When I got up and approached the thing, I quickly realised it was in fact not a spider or a bug. What I was looking at was, to me, what seemed like a drop of tar black ink suspended in the air. I was like, guys, this is not a spider. Look. I then proceeded to wave my hands around it, above and below, and there was absolutely nothing holding it in place. Being either incredibly brave or stupid, I went to touch it when my wife screamed to me, no, don't touch it, are you crazy? I stopped short, but not because of her. As I was going in to touch it, I saw movement from this ink. It was your typical teardrop shape, but the skinny top part of the teardrop was moving around like a squid tentacle. This was some for real, Marvel's Venom, symbiote looking shit. I pulled my hand back and I sat back down on the couch between my friend and wife. For the next five minutes that felt like an hour, the three of us sat in total awe at this black ink floated about seven foot from the centre of the living room. Past all three of us, 
through the storage room door that was closed. It just materialized right through it. My first question was, we all saw that, right? Of course they had. My wife was the first to see it. My friend left immediately after, and my wife and I, still to this day, talk about the mysterious ink blob that floated through our living room. Crazy stuff, man. For a long time, I've had encounters of the paranormal kind. Mostly while awake, but there have been a few instances that the spirits of loved ones visit my dreams. Back in 2005, I was living in New York. I moved here from Texas due to heavy involvement in drugs and gangs. I was there for about five months, met a girl, and moved in with her and her family. One night, I had an incredibly vivid dream about my grandmother. In my dream, I was walking on a beautiful beach with white sand. Just ahead of me was a canopy or something. You know those pop-up things people put up at picnics and barbecues to give shade? Well, I woke up to it, and there was my grandmother, sitting in a folding chair, in front of a folding table, wearing a beautiful black dress. Totally out of place for where we found ourselves. I sat down in the chair opposite her and looked around, confused. It was an odd scene, to say the least. Oh, hey, she said, realising I was there. Want to play some Uno or Dominoes? We used to play one or the other every time we were together. Still confused, I said, sure, but what are we doing here? As she set up the dominoes and did the whole shuffling thing, she said, well, you weren't around and I wanted to say goodbye. Goodbye? Where are you going? I asked. She didn't answer my question, but did say, please promise me that you'll stay out of trouble and be a good man. I promise, but where are you going? What are we doing here? I asked. As she looked out over the ocean. Remember, I love you, I heard her say. As I turned back to say, I love you too, she was gone. I stood up and looked around and saw her walking into the surf. I walked after her saying, Nanny, Nanny, that's what we called her. Where are you going? She didn't answer and kept walking out into the ocean until she was completely gone. I was stricken with a sense of panic, but only for a moment, because as I looked around, I realised the canopy, chairs and table were gone and had been replaced with a set of wide, white stone chairs or stadium-type seats, and sitting on all of these were all of my family, uncles, aunts, cousins, and my mother. I woke up gasping for air with a totally weird feeling of urgency. I had to call and check on my grandma. I called my mother immediately, and before she could say anything, I asked, Is Nanny okay? My mother paused, and I heard a sniffle. Son, Nanny passed about an hour ago. I was about to call you and let you know, she said through restrained sobs. The dream suddenly made sense. She had come to me to say goodbye. See, I was raised around my mother's side of the family, who's a bunch of white country folk. I'm mixed, and I'm a little more brown than the rest of the grandbabies. Growing up, I was treated less than welcome by quite a few family members, but never Nanny. She loved me like I was just one of the babies, never made me feel unwelcome. If anything, she made me feel more loved than some of the others. We were pretty close. It was so heartwarming to know that before she left our plane of existence, she came to say goodbye to being thousands of miles away. It's a moment in my life that I'll never forget. <laughs>